All right, everybody, today we're going to be working with more degrees and radians, something you need to be aware of right now. So when you are drawing an angle, this side right here is referred to as the initial side. All right? Now, that initial side in standard position, if you look at an x, y coordinate grid, that right there, the initial side is always going to be on the x axis. So right here, this is your initial side. Initial meaning starting position. Okay. The word terminal means that's where you finish. So if this is the initial side, this right here, as it opens up, that becomes the terminal side. Over on this one, the terminal side is right over here in the second quadrant. Now, if I were to use the protractor, I could take a protractor, measure it. What would be the degree of this angle right here? It looks like it goes up around 45 degrees over here. I measured this one. It's like it's about 115, yeah, about 115 degrees. So right here you can label your angle, 45 degrees. You can label this 115 degrees. This is what you're used to. You're used to degrees. So I'm going to call theta equals 115 and theta equals 45. Now both of these angles are considered to be positive angles. All right. Because I traveled in a positive direction. Whenever you travel from the initial side and you go this way, which is going counterclockwise, that creates a positive measure. Okay? But if I were to go down a little bit, this right here is considered to be a positive angle. So which direction is it going? It started here and it finished right there. So how many degrees would theta be in this case? It definitely traveled at least how many degrees from here to here? 180. 180. So it definitely traveled 180 plus whatever angle is right there. So let's just say it was 20. That's about a 20 degree angle. We would add 20 degrees and we would say theta is equal to what? 200 degrees. But if I start here and I finish going in a clockwise rotation, that means I have not a positive angle, I have a negative angle. Here, what, where was I traveling? I was traveling from here, my initial side, traveling towards my terminal side. Here, there's my initial side, traveling towards my terminal side. I do it a horrible time. It's part of it. So once again, what do I, I want you to label something. This is your initial side. And this side right here of the angle is your terminal side. And that point right here at the origin, that point, that point is called your vertex. Oh my goodness, how many degrees did that travel? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my protractor, put it right here, and it's about 115 degrees. But wait a second, if that's 115 degrees as a positive, how long would that be if I were a... 245, 245 degrees. You're correct. Because what do these have to add up to in the absolute value? Okay, so right here. The absolute value of 115 degrees plus the absolute value of negative 245 degrees would have to add up to a total of 360 degrees. So if you're going clockwise, you're going to get an answer that's what? Negative. If you're going counterclockwise, you're going to get an answer that is positive. All right, so we need a couple of things right now. I need you guys to draw a couple of circles. All right, so draw a circle like this and circle like this. Don't worry, I'll 
don't give you time to do it. I'll pause. Because we have a new concept today. Degrees versus ratings. Okay, so right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create some... Uh, x-axis going through it, y-axis, doing my best to make, oh that one's not 90, it's a good thing I don't read my comments, some people are critical. I, I thought I did. I guess I did not. I have not. Oh, wow. This is... Oh, so right now, everybody, what I'd like you to do for degrees, I'd like you to write zero degrees. Here, I'd like you to write 90 degrees, 180 degrees, and 270 degrees. I'm going to also put the word or. You go all the way around a circle, that means you've traveled a total of 360 degrees, which means this. If you start here and you go all the way around a circle, that's 360. If I went this way, that would be called a negative 360. If you go clockwise, that's a positive 360. If you go... Sorry, I said wrong. If I go counterclockwise, that's a positive 360. If I go clockwise, that's a negative 360. So write those down. All right, we're having technical problems there. Here we go. Tell me something you guys know about what's called the circumference of a circle. The circumference of a circle is equal to what? 2 times pi times the radius. And what would that give you? That would give you the distance around the circle, right? That's something you should know. We're going to talk about a new concept called radians today, all right? Now, circumference deals with how many degrees? Circumference is dealing with what? 360 degrees, the distance all the way around a circle. Well, just like the circumference is equal to 2 times pi times the radius, 360 degrees is equal to 2 times pi times the concept called a radian. So I want you to write that down. 360 degrees equals 2 times pi times a radian. A radian is a measure of an angle that's not in degrees. Now, if we wanted to figure out what a radian was, what you'd have to do is divide both sides by a 2 and a pi. When you do that, a radian is equal to 180 divided by pi. Now, if you type that in the calculator, it would get you 57.3 degrees. That's the approximate value of a radian. This is what you need to have in your journal. So we're going to go, so just you guys know, <clears throat> I do 180. Divided by pi, you get 57.29. I just rounded to 57.3. So when I say, what's a radian equal to, you'd say it's 180 over pi if you wanted to be exact. If you wanted to be have an approximate value, that approximate value is equal to 57.3 degrees. Now, we need two different formulas. You need to know how to go from degrees two radians. And you need to know how to go from radians to degrees. Okay. So if you want to go from degrees to radians, here's what you do. You take whatever degrees that you have. So let's say, for example, you had uh, 25 degrees. Let's say you had 25 degrees. And you want to change that to radians. What do you have to do? If you take your degrees and you multiply it by pi over 180, 
and that will equal the number of radians that you have. So we're going to take 25 degrees, we're going to multiply it by pi over 180, that would be 25 pi over 180, and that can be reduced. If you want to reduce it, take 25, divide it by 180, hit the math button, press enter twice because we're both multiple by 5, and you get 5 over 36. So your final answer is 5 pi over 36, I'm going to put rad for radians. So from degrees to radians. If I have 25 degrees, how many radians do I have? 5 pi over 36 radians. Now, we're going to go from radians to degrees. So here's one of your formulas. Don't worry, I'll pause just a second. There we go. There's your first formula, right there. So I'm going to highlight the formula right here. This is what you need. you got to tell me what your degrees are. You multiply it by what? Pi over 180. And what does that give you? Number of radians. So that's what you need right there. Now we're going to go from radians to degrees. So right now, you take the number of radians that you have. So right now, everybody, I'm going to give you some radians. I'm going to say, what if your theta, what was theta, was equal to 3 pi over Four. Let's say that's what it was. If you have the number of radians, all you have to do is take it and multiply it by 180 over pi, and that will convert your answer to degrees. So we're going to take 3 pi over 4, four multiplied by 180 over pi, and here's your other formula. If you want to go from radians to degrees, this is your formula. Take however many radians you have, multiply it by 180 over pi. Now what cancels out? What do you guys see cancels out? This pi will cancel out this pi. And you get 3 times 180 all divided by a 4. And when you get that, you put it in your calculator. What does that end up becoming? 3 times 180 divided by 4. 135 degrees. That would be your answer. So you have two formulas. Right? There. This one changes it from radians to degrees. This one changes it from degrees to radians. You need to know both of those. Okay. So when you guys go and look at your problems, like problem number... So what was the answer for number 5? The answer for number 5 was 5 pi over 36. The answer for number 7 was 135 degrees. Well, how do you know if it's a radian or a degree? Look, you see that? What do you, what do you know it's that, that is right there? That has to be a degree. If you don't see it, that means your measurement is in radians. So I need to go back. You guys have the circle right here? Now we're going to start with the circle. We're going to make radians. So right here, this is 0 pi. This is pi over 2. This is pi. This is 3 pi over 2. Now we're going to get more in depth later, but right now I need you guys to understand that each 90 degrees, every single time you see a pi over 2, that equals 90 degrees. So every single time. So pi over 2, what's pi over 2 plus pi over 2? That's pi. So pi is equal to 180. This is one and a half pi, so that's equal to 270. And every time you see 2 pi, that equals 360. So make sure you guys have your 
circle with degrees and your circle with the measurement for radians. All right, right now we're going to work on number 10. So right now, we are going to find all the coterminal angles for number 10. So I want you guys to write a new vocabulary word. Coterminal, what does it mean? Okay. What does the word terminal mean when you're dealing with angles? The side where a final Final destination, right? Okay. Co-worker, what is a co-worker? Somebody who you work with at the exact same place. A co-terminal angle, angles that finish at the exact same place. So right now, we have an angle, right? What measurement is that in? Is that in degrees or radians? That's radians. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to convert this to degrees so we can kind of see what that looks like. We're going to take negative 7 pi over 4, and we're going to multiply negative 7 pi over 4 times 180 over pi. When these pi's cancel out, you are left with a negative angle. All right? When you guys multiply together, what you get? Basically times 180. Our answer is going to be negative, right? You get 315 degrees. So what you're going to do? Yep, negative 315 degrees. Now let me. What I'm going to do right now, Raymond, is I'm going to take that and plot it right over here. I'm going to make my x-axis and y-axis. All right. So here's my x-axis right here. Here's my y-axis right there. I'm going to make it up and down. There we go. I'm going to draw my circle right here. And now I'm going to travel from here. That's standard position right there. That's standard position. I'm going to travel negative 315 degrees. So I have to go clockwise. I've gone 90. I've gone 180. Or negative 180. I've gone negative 2. 70, and I need to go right about in here. So from here all the way around is how many degrees? Negative 315 degrees. So I need to find other angles that are coterminal with that. So if I went not in a negative direction, if I went in a positive direction, it's not parallel, but parallel. Just remember, negative 315 degrees, the absolute value of it, plus the absolute value of another positive angle, what do they have to always add up to equal in degrees? They always have to add up to equal 360, which means the angle that has to be here is 45 degrees, because the absolute value of this one plus the absolute value of this one have to add up to 360. Okay? So right now, what's another coterminal angle? You could say it's 45 degrees. So right now, let's list everything we have. We have a what? We have a negative 315 degrees. We have a positive 45 degrees. In radians, we have a negative 7 pi over 4. Now, if I take the absolute value of negative 7 pi over 4, if I end up adding the absolute value of another degree angle in radians, that would have to add up to not 360, but that would have to add up to 2 pi. So, if you didn't know that answer, you could just take 45 degrees and do what with it? You could convert it to radians. So how could I do that? I could take 45 degrees and multiply it by pi over 180, which gives us 45 pi 
over 180, but 45 goes into 180. Or, Now, this may not make a whole lot of sense right now. That's okay. I want you to look at the pattern. What is the absolute value of negative 7 pi over 4? What's the absolute value? A positive 7 pi over 4. And if I add another pi over 4, how many pi's do I have in the numerator? 7 pi plus pi gives me 8 pi over 4. And what is 8 pi divided by 4? 2. So this, the absolute value of this radian plus the absolute value of this radian has to equal what? 2 pi. So what? I, now I have four co-terminal angles. So listen, everybody, this is your initial side. This is your terminal side. So Jay, if I said, Jay, I want you to go 45 degrees. And then I said, Carter, I want you to go negative 350 degrees. And then I said, Kaylee, I need you to go negative 7 pi over 4 radians. And I said, Josiah, I need you to go pi over 4 radians. Guess what you're going to find? You all meet right there. Like, hey, look, Mr. Mood gave me different directions, but we all got the same spot. So there is a formula. This is the last thing we're going to talk about today. There's a formula to get all of your measurement for degrees, like all the coterminal angles. And there is a formula to find all your coterminal angles. So this is called the coterminal formulas. Co-terminal formulas, right? So here we go. If you now theta is in degrees here. What's theta in over here? Radians. All you gotta do is take theta and add 360 degrees times k. Now k just represents, it has to represent an integer. What are integers like? Negative two, negative one. Okay, 0, 1, 2, and so on and so forth. So no decimals, okay? And radians theta plus 2 pi times k. So listen, what was our degree? 45 degrees, right? What's 45 degrees over here? It's equal to pi over 4. So if I was at 45 degrees and I wanted to find more than just one coterminal angle, I can add 360 times values of k. So it could be plus 360 times 0, 360 times 1, 360 times 2. You could do 360 times negative 1. And this will give me a bunch. All of these answers right here, all of these answers are going to be coterminal angles. So here's your formula. So right here. Oh, not there. Right there. And right there. So what are you adding or subtracting every single time from an angle? You're either adding or subtracting 360 degrees. Here, what are you adding or subtracting? 2 pi. And you'll get 1 after the other. So right now, Josiah, help me out real quick before we leave. We have 45 degrees plus 360 times 0. That's... 45 degrees. You add 360 to that. What do you get? Nope, not, not 315. Sorry. I was negative 315. What's 45 plus that? We've got to add, that's going to be 400 and 405. All right? We add 360 more to that because that's two of them. Right? So that's what is it? 765. So what is what do all of these right here have in common? They all finish where? They all finish right there. Every single time. Alright, I know we're running out of time. Alright, before I leave you, we're gonna go over a couple of situations that you might run into. Okay? Whenever you're dealing with degrees and you want to change it to a certain number of radians. You know the process now. It's 130 degrees times what? Times pi over 180. But listen, you don't want to just do this in a calculator because here's what happens. When you do it, 
do 130, and you say times pi divided by 180, you're going to get an ugly looking decimal, okay? Because what's the calculator multiplying that you really don't want it to multiply? You don't want it to multiply the pi. So really what you want is you want 130 divided by 180, and that would simplify to 13 over 18. Like if you simplify the fraction, it's 13 over 18. Okay? So this right here does become 130 times pi over 180, but when you simplify the fraction, see the zeros will cancel out. So your answer in terms of pi, all radian answers, if you can, all radian answers you want in terms of pi. Now what does in terms of pi mean? If you're taking an ACT or an SAT test, what does in terms of pi mean? It means this answer, the pi is not multiplying to. This is your answer in terms of pi. Now if you would have written it like this, hold on, 13 over 18 times pi, this is your answer in terms of of pi. Now this one, you're not going to have an answer in terms of pi, because what's going to eventually cancel out? When you take this and you multiply it by what? 180, ah, 180 over pi. What's going to cancel out here? The pi's cancel out, okay? And 3 goes into 180 60 times, and 5 times 60 is 300. So, radians, by the way, this is 300 degrees. We would call this 13 18th pi radians. We put R A B. Okay. So, right now, remember how to convert what? Degrees to radians and radians to degrees.